Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's for this Eucharistic celebration on the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand as you are able. So today we have a special gift and a grace of celebrating a baptism within the Mass today. And so as we gather here at the entrance of the church with the family and the one to be baptized, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear parents and godparents, your families have experienced great joy at the birth of your child, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. The community rejoices with you. For today, the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased, and we offer you our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for this child and for, his fam for her family, and renewing our commitment to the Lord and to his people. And so I ask you, parents, what name do you give your child? Clara Alexandra. Clara Alexandra. And what do you ask of God's church for Clara Alexandra? Baptism. In asking for baptism for your child, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising her in the faith, so that keeping God's commandments, she may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ has taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? I do. Godparents. 
Are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty? Clara Alexander, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. Then after me your parents and godparents may do the same. Having claimed this child for Christ, we go forward into the church to the altar of God. And as we gather here on this uh, anticipatory Mass for the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time, it is nice to have a baptism celebrated in the church. Uh, again, I know for COVID reasons, for health reasons, it's been a little bit of a time since the last time we did it at a Sunday Mass. Uh, and again, I understand with, with young <laughs> children with uh, not really real developed immune systems, it's probably a good idea. But again, praise God that you are here today. The church encourages us to celebrate these sacraments during the Mass, during the Mass with the people, that we might see and rejoice as part of a community, that we might celebrate the gift of new life, new members of God's church. Uh, it does say that we shouldn't do it every Sunday, but uh, it is good to do it on an occasional basis. And as we come forward, we are praying for, for this child, for her family, and that all of us might know the grace of God at work in us and our community. So it is a little bit different in that we omit the penitential rite, and we include that later in the renunciation of, of sin and the devil. And so we turn now giving glory to God. Praise you, we bless you, we adore you. 
Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days for Jesus' being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In a number of ways, our readings today focus on this idea of being chosen by God, being called to follow him and to be a disciple. The Lord says very specifically to Elijah, he says, go to Elisha. 
son of Shaphat, and anoint him as the prophet to succeed you. Go to him, for I have chosen him. The Lord in the gospel on his journeys is, again, greeted by someone who says, I will follow you wherever you go, who has put that spirit into his heart to say yes to the Lord. Another, he says, very specifically, follow me. Another says, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go say farewell to my family. This idea of being called, of being chosen, is again rather fitting for the day as we celebrate a baptism. This idea that we are first called by God. It is not something that we do that makes God um, decide to bring uh, or to come to us. It is not something that we first merit somehow on our own that enables us to be then baptized into the faith. It is God's gift to us first and foremost. Uh, not only did he create us, did he choose us even before we existed, but he has chosen to reveal himself to us in some particular way that we might know him, that we might know revelation, that we might see and love God who has first loved us. And it's very true for the baptism of infants. And in fact, it's part of the reason the church baptizes infants, because it helps us recognize this very true uh, understanding that this child, who cannot yet speak for herself, has not done anything to be loved by God. She, simply by existing, by being chosen by God, is loved. It is God's first love, prior, first priority of his love, which enables this child to know grace, to know the saving gift of baptism, the sacrament of the church, that enables us to recognize what it means to be loved by God. And acknowledging that, we can see in then other ways how even though we are sinners, even though we fail to at times live up to our baptismal promises, even a time when we fail to be a good witness or a good Christian, we know that we are first and foremost loved by God and called to this deeper relationship, called to conversion, called to forgiveness of sins, called to an eternal life of grace with God. It is such a powerful and a profound gift. But like the individuals in our scriptures, at times, we can fail to appreciate it, or we can turn away or be distracted by other things. Like Elisha, we can say, let me go first and say goodbye to my parents. Like the people in the gospel can say, um, let me first go and bury my father. We can use any number of excuses saying, I am too young. Wait until my parents are dead and then I will live my faith. Wait until I have first said goodbye to them or to somehow distance myself from, from whatever else is in our life, and then I will follow you. There are so many excuses that we can make, so many different varieties of excuses to fail to follow the Lord. Even the excuses, again, of not having good examples in our own lives and seeing so many Again, families which are broken can be hard for individuals to understand God's love and what it means to be loved. Harder to say yes when they hear that the Lord, the Son of Man, has nowhere to rest his head. They can turn away and fail to say yes to that task, to that calling of being a disciple. As we celebrate this baptism for Clara Alexander, we ask that she might have the grace of God poured out in abundance upon her, the fullness of the Spirit, that she might know faith, and that it might not only descend upon her, but upon her family, her parents, and her godparents, whose, tasks, whose task it is now to raise that child in the faith, to love that child unconditionally as God has loved her, that she might, through the love of parents and family members, be able to recognize and understand God's love for her, to be good teachers of the faith, 
to be that witness and that example, to attend Mass, to adore the Lord, to celebrate the sacramental life of the Church, to constantly be surrounded by that presence of what is good and holy, true and beautiful, that she might see it as well and desire it more and more for herself. That when that time comes and the Lord says, I have appointed you to be my witness to the nations, to be a prophet before others, to be a disciple, she might not come back with any excuses, but she might say from all the depths of her heart and her soul, Yes, Lord, I will follow you. It's our prayer for her, but it's our prayer for all of us that we might no longer look upon excuses, but we might look upon how much God has loved us and be inspired to say yes to him today and every day of our lives. Dear brothers and sisters, let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for this child about to receive the grace of baptism and for her parents, godparents, and all the baptized. Give this child new birth in baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection and join her to your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Make her a faithful disciple and witness to your gospel through baptism and confirmation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead her through holiness of life to the joys of the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Make her parents and godparents shining examples of the faith to this child. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her family always in your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Renew the grace of baptism in each one of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intention today and for all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we offer our litany of saints, asking Mary, the angels and saints, to be with this child through her life and to be with all of us, the response is pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Clare, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Saint Cloud, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. I invite you to be seated at this time, except for parents, godparents, if you would just stay standing. Almighty, ever-living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin, to make her a temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation. In the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And I invite you to come up to the font. Parents, God, Prince, you want to come around that side? Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. We first ask God's blessing upon this water that we will be using for baptism. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wonderful effect through sacramental signs, 
and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung from the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive the Holy Spirit, the grace of your only begotten Son, so that the human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, Come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring her up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in them day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. So I ask parents, godparents, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Parents, once more I ask you, is it your will that Clara Alexander should receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? It is. Okay. And if you would bring her over the font. Clara Alexandra, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There you go. Nice job. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you, Clara, from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with this chrism oil of salvation, so that you may remain a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king, unto eternal life. This is the one with the special fragrance, so you'll be smelling that as you hopefully the rest of the day. Clara, you have become a new creation. You have clothed yourself in Christ. See, in this white garment you wear a sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring it unstained into eternal life. Amen.
Got this. Take that together. Receive the light of Christ. You can go stand over by Claire. I'll give you this one too, by the way. Parents and godparents, this child of yours is entrusted to be kept. This light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. Amen. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his words with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And congratulations to you, Claire, and let us congratulate her on the newest member of God's church. Always wonderful to celebrate baptism. Continue to pray for her and for her family, especially as we now offer our gifts to the Lord uh, through our, our collection, our offertory, and those gifts of bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all in his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Donald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord, to whom 
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one announcement. Uh, there is uh, a grief seminar being held this Sunday for anyone going through any kind of loss or need healing, uh, 1 p.m. at St. Michael's Church. Please join us. Remember, you are not alone. As we close, we close with a particular blessing for the, the family of the newly baptized. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. The Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth upon their children. May he graciously bless the mother of this child so that as she now gives th thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with her in thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life, both in heaven and on earth, bless the father of this child, so that together with his wife, he may, by word and example, prove to be the first example of the faith to their child. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit has given us new birth into eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people and we bestow his peace on all who are here. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And as we go forth, I first invite you to uh, kneel as you are able and join in our prayer to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and your humbly pray. And to the Thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who all about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.